Lesson 25 in Theory of Road Vehicle Motion. In this lesson, we will be taking a dive into the drag force calculation and we will talk a little bit about the drag coefficient. In the end of the lesson, we will do a practical example and we will actually calculate the force of air drag at four different speeds and we will discuss the results. First of all, what is drag? In the previous lesson, we learned about the resultant force that comes from all of the forces that act on the vehicle body due to it going through a fluid, in our case air. And we reduced all of those forces to one force, which looked something like this, and it was the, the resultant aerodynamic force, okay? Then we said that this force is acting on an angle compared to the horizontal axis. This means that we have both the horizontal component for this force and the vertical component of this force. Now, the horizontal component of this force, FD, is actually air drag that we're going to talk about in this lesson. And the vertical component is, of course, the force of lift, which we will talk about in the next lesson. The force of air drag is an opposing force that uh, resists vehicle motion. It is a result of the vehicle cutting through the air while moving. Why is it so important for us? Well, the force of air drag at higher speed is the force of resistance that takes up most of the usable energy in road vehicles. If we take a look at this chart on the left side, the red function right here is the force of air drag. The green function is the force of rolling resistance that we talked about in the previous section and the blue function is the sum of these two forces. You can see how the force of air drag after 40 kilometers per hour, so on the, on the x-axis we have the speed and on the y-axis we have the force, so you can see how it starts to exponentially rise. So it actually becomes very important for us when we pass a certain speed point and actually, as you can see, rises exponentially with the rise of speed. We will see why does it act like this in the next slide. So how do we calculate this force? This is the equation for the force of air drag. We denote the force of air drag as F lower case D. So FD, as in force of drag, is equal to CD, which is the drag coefficient, okay? We will talk about this coefficient uh, in the next slide as well, times the cross-sectional area of the vehicle. Now, this cross-sectional area of the vehicle is actually the frontal side of the vehicle. It is calculated by multiplying the height and the width of the vehicle. So you can see that this, this frontal area is like a projection. If, if you project the light to a vehicle to its front, the, the shadow is actually going to be this area that we're talking about. So we have the drag coefficient times the frontal area of the vehicle body times... Now here we have the density of the fluid, in our case air, times the speed of the vehicle squared divided by 2. Now in this equation, the speed is squared. So a slight change in the speed of the vehicle will increase the air drag drastically. This is why we saw this exponential rise on the graph on the previous slide. The coefficient of drag, CD, is an empirical coefficient, which is dimensionless, and you can see from this equation that the smaller the coefficient, the smaller the force. So when you see a vehicle which has a very low coefficient of drag, that means that that vehicle is going to have less air drag and has overall good aerodynamics. Now I wrote this part divided like this for a reason. Why is this here? Well, this is actually called dynamic pressure. Because the vehicle body is cutting through air, it is fighting the kinetic energy of the fluid, therefore we use this dynamic pressure. So if you simplify it, you can see that this force is actually just the area times pressure times this coefficient of drag. 
In fluid dynamics, the drag coefficient is a dimensionless quantity that is used to quantify the drag or resistance of an object in a fluid environment, such as air or water. It is used in the drag equation in which a lower drag coefficient as we saw indicates the object will have less aerodynamic or if it's in water hydrodynamic drag. The drag coefficient is always associated with a particular surface area. Now here we have some measured drag coefficients for various shapes. So you can see that the streamlined body that looks kind of like a teardrop has a very low coefficient of drag. Now the drag coefficient of any object comprises the effects of two basic contributors to fluid dynamic drag, skin friction and form drag, which we said in the previous lesson is the biggest contributor. So we get 90% form drag and about 10% skin friction. So why is this all important for us? Well, when the vehicle goes into development, it goes through a long set of experiments and resistance estimates. One of it actually happens in the wind tunnel and through CFD simulation, so the manufacturers know how much the drag coefficient is for the given body, for the given model. So why do they need this? Well, they need this so they can calculate how much power is going to go on overcoming this air drag. Okay, now I would advise you to bring out a paper or a notebook and try to follow this calculation that we're going to do. We're going to calculate the force of air drag at four different speeds for my car, actually. This is an Opel or Vauxhall Astra G or Astra Mark IV, I think, if it's, it's a Vauxhall denotation. And I found the specs that we need for this exercise on the website, which you have in the resource part of this lesson. So if you want to calculate the force of air drag for your own car or a car of your choosing, you can do so by searching the model in the search bar of the website and you can pull out the information right here. So first off, we need to calculate the frontal area of this car. So the frontal area, A, is going to be the width times the height, right? So we need the width of the car times the height of the car. And we're going to write this in meters because we need the area to be in meters squared. So we have A is equal to 1.709 times meters times the height is 1.465 meters. So what we get is that the area is equal to 2.503 meters squared. We're gonna use the air density at 15 degrees Celsius, which is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. So let's say that we want to calculate the, the, the air drag, the force of air drag at the speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Okay, 60 kilometers per hour. The first thing we have to do is we have to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second because those are the dimensions we need. So how do you calculate this? It's, it's pretty easy. So you just take the speed in kilometers per hour. So how many meters are in a kilometer? 1000, right? And how many seconds are in an hour? So that's 60 seconds per minute. So 60 times 60 is 3600, okay? And what we get is that the speed is going to be 16.66 meters per second, okay? So this is the speed that we're looking for. So now to calculate the, the force of air drag, we write force of air drag is equal to, first we have to write the coefficient of drag times this area that we just found times the density times the speed squared divided by two, okay? So force of air drag is equal. How much is the drag coefficient? Well, the aerodynamic drag coefficient in this 
place it is marked by CX, but this is it. So it's 0 0.31. So 0 0.31 times the area in meters squared times 2.503 meters squared times the density of the fluid is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed times the speed 16.66 16 meters per second divided by 2. Okay, so if we put this all into the calculator, what we get is around 132 newtons. Okay, so this is the force of air drag for this particular vehicle at 60 kilometers per hour, okay? Now I want you to, to do this calculation by yourself for this particular vehicle at 80 kilometers per hour, okay? Pause the video and do this calculation. So if you did the calculation correctly, you should get around 235 newtons. So here we can see that at 60 kilometers per hour, the force of air drag is 132. Mind that these are all 20 kilometers per hour differences. So the step is 20 kilometers per hour. So we're going 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, and 160. See that this difference from 80 to 60 is 103 newtons while the difference between 160 kilometers per hour and 140 is actually two times this it's 220 newtons this is of course because the dynamic pressure equation is speed squared so the function looks a little bit like this it's not linear it's actually exponential and this is it for the lesson on air drag. See you in the next lesson in which we will talk about the vertical component of the resultant force, which is of course lift.